afternoon everyone and welcome to Kitchen Exploration, our second episode in this five part series and in the kitchen with me today are my two handy kitchen hands. What's your name again guy? Jack. Jack who? Duplessis. And your name? Blake Duplessis. Alright, and they are going to help me today in the kitchen. Now as you can see they're not standing next to each other because sometimes I think kids can get distracted by being too close to each other, not concentrating to what we are trying to do here. So, guys, what are we cooking today? Eggs. What eggs. kind of what kind of eggs? Uh, scrambled eggs. And boiled eggs. But it's not no, not scrambled eggs. We're doing what do you have every morning for breakfast? I have omelette. Omelette. Omelette and a. And. Poached eggs and eggs and soldiers. Exactly, eggs and soldiers. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Right, if you have not already got your pre prep done, please make sure you will need the following goodies, all right? We will need some eggs. Six would be too much, but depending on how many kids you have to serve, that is entirely up to you. So we will need some eggs. I've got two pots on the stove. If you can, either boil your kettle and um, get your hot water ready on the stove. I've got one pot for poached egg, I've got one pot for a boiled egg. Then I've also got a pan for my omelette. My kitchen hands are going to help me with this process and today we are going to start with our boiled egg first. Now let's get a sharp little knife out so we can tell our friends why we need a sharp little knife. Now there's great little cooking utensils you can use for boiled eggs but I find and again remember I am a chef and I'm a professional so I deal with knives a lot of a big part of my day or a large part of my day so I've got an egg now inside the egg you would notice next time when, when we are peeling an egg you'll notice there's a very thin white membrane like a little piece of skin on the inside between the shell and the actual boiled egg now that little membrane has got a little air bubble in. Now if we just had to chuck this boiled or this raw egg, this raw egg in our pot, what will happen is that air pocket wants to escape. Is that still coming standing in the chair? Okay, you gotta go and ask Lynette. Lynette, can you please help buggy? We've got an urgent toilet break. Apologies guys. So what I was saying is there's a little egg membrane inside the egg and that, air, air, that membrane has got an air pocket. Now what we want to do is just with the shop, you get like a needle or pin or a special egg pricker. I use a, a, a sharp little kitchen paring knife and just right at the top, I'm gonna just work my knife in. And the reason why the egg doesn't break is that if you had to compress an egg like this, it would be very hard. Even you need to have quite a lot of arm strength to break an egg. Uh, from if you had to press it from the top to the bottom but if I had to turn the egg on the side and I had to squash it right now I could probably sneeze and break it so the point is just the reason why the knife is not breaking our egg is because that that is the strongest part of our egg and that will actually assist so I'm gonna take let's do two 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 eggs because my boys love eggs I'm gonna do two eggs Okay, great. I'm glad you just made a wee model. So, we are... No, no, I'm going to do the boil. Okay? I'm just worried you're going to burn yourself because it's a hot stove and boiling water. Alright? So, slowly putting my egg in my boiling water and immediately you can see the air coming out of that little pocket we've created. And actually some of the egg whites are also coming out. So there, perfect. Our egg did not explode and that's really going to help us when we are doing our eggs and soldier. Okay, come check, come check, come check. You see? Where's, the, where's that stuff coming from? Yeah, no, that's from the egg white. You see? And then most importantly, friends, you've got to set a timer for seven minutes because in my world, the perfect egg for eggs and soldiers, sorry, I just want to get my timer, is seven minutes. Timer. Okay, you push start first. Boom. Straight up, just like that. Jack, if you can do us a favor, get us a slice of toast from our back fridge. Blakey, if you can get us a mixing bowl and our whisk. 
Now the fun part is, because the boys do know our kitchen quite well, the most important part is for them to really get involved. If I had to have all the prep done, they would just look at me and I actually start yawning and be completely distracted. So remember, we've got to get our egg whisk right there, and Dad will get the bowl. Because this is going to be for our second part of the experience. All right, remember, we just put it in the toaster, but don't put the toaster down. All right, because we still have five more minutes. Buggy's got our cheese mixer. Eggs are boiling perfectly. And assume, Jack, so this is your big responsibility, dude. When that hits four minutes, so four minutes means zero, four, zero, zero. Okay, then you gotta go and put our toaster down, okay? Push it down so our toaster is ready, but not yet. Can I? Which part? Uh, press the blue button. No, Jack is gonna do that because he's our toaster guy, but I think you should break our eggs first. Are you brave enough to break our egg? Mm. Or should Dad help you? I need to help. Okay, cool. I will help you. I'm gonna make the crack and you use your fingers. Push in there with your thumbs. So guys, we've just created a little crack with the side of our plate. Oops. And now Blakey is just going to push both his thumbs inside our little crack. Pull open. Don't squish. Don't squish. And ta-da. <coughs> wait, wait, wait. We're going to do another one. Okay. Again, not too hard. Don't push. Just pull. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Quick, you go and rinse your hands. Thanks, my boy. So this is going to be our preparation for our scrambled eggs. But I would like, before we start with our next installment, sorry for not making eye contact, guys. I've got a naughty piece of eggshell. Oh, Jack, toast in. Let's go, go, go. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. That's fine. That's fine. So we have three and a half minutes, guys, before we are going on our first installment of this fun episode with the brain building eggs and our toast is in. Jack has confirmed. All right, Blake, you can be our chief mixer. Ooh, mix. But you both can mix. We can come here, Blake. Okay. Can I mix? One? I've added a splash of milk, but you can also add water if you don't do dairy uh, or a nut milk but I mean water is obviously the most easiest um, alternative for that particular part. Blakey how about you put a pinch of salt, a little bit more, all right and do what you do best Blake. mix mix mix, use your, use your beater, use this and you give that the best mix you could, can already. Alright, my pan is already warming up as well at the same time. Team, our boiled egg has got two and a half minutes to go. Like I said earlier, remember, seven minutes for me is the perfect number for eggs and solids. So, we want to be able to cut off the top of the egg where it's just cooked through at the top, but the egg yolk is soft enough so when you stick your toast inside, that egg yellow will come up and... Okay, that's fine. Give it a good mix. Sure, Blake, you did very well there with the mixing, hey? Where did you, how, many, how often do you do mixing? Mm. Do you guys do mixing at school? No, but we do often here when we make our breakfast, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Great work, Jack Jack. And we not are. when we do growling granola. Not when we do growling granola. Okay, but this is fine because we're going to keep this to the side. Because we're going to use that just, just now. Okay, cool. Jack, because you are the older kid in the kitchen and the most responsible one, I would like you to do the grating of the cheese because I know you are comfortable enough to deal with something sharp. Now kids, please do remember, please, 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 the side or the teeth of the grater is very sharp. So if you're not confident with something like this, the last thing you want to do is have your fingers too close to the grater and then, oops, your finger gets stuck, then you'll take the skin off 
and it can be quite burning and in some cases you could grate your finger and it can bleed. So please, please, please be careful. I'll let the grown-up open the cheese for you. We're going to use some plain cheddar. This knife is a very sharp. Yeah. How sharp can a knife be? Very sharp. Very sharp. And what will happen if you, if little kids play with knives? Uh, they will get some blood. Yeah, okay. So Jackie, come better into the shop. Just remember not to get too close to the flame. Yeah, this, one. this one, please. 20 seconds, everyone. 20 seconds. And Bill, our eggs are ready. Let's count together by 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, eggs are ready. And the race is off. Please turn off your cooking hob over on that side. Immediately take out your egg. Use a spoon because the last thing I want to do is let every, anyone get burned. No. Yeah, yeah, don't even touch that boy because what will happen? That egg is so, so hot. Let me see. That is so much. Thanks, Jack. That is plenty, plenty, plenty. Yeah, this Let's take this out. Yeah, 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 please get the toast. Dad, Dad, mm -hmm. it's a five foot because it's white. Yes, yes and yes. So what we're doing here, guys, please, 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 use a tea towel. And the reason, that's perfect, dude. Put it here. But do you remember how to do butter on toast, Jack? Yes. All right. So we have got some grass-fed butter. And our butter is always at room temperature. It makes it not only just easy for me to spread the, the butter on the toast, but also for the boys. So Jack, if you can do the honors and get some butter on our toast. And then the moment of truth, everybody. Please get a nice, sharp, serrated knife. And the reason why I'm using a serrated knife, this is a bread knife. And the reason why we're using the bread knife is that this is actually sharp enough to just go through that shell part and it just helps me cut the top of our egg cup. You also have to get crap and you can feed the water. Oh, that's so squishy, bug. That's going to be perfect. Can I feel it? Yeah, you can feel it. Not there. You can feel it at the top. So one. Da 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 da. Yeah, but don't stick it in because that egg, egg yolk is going to be boiling, boiling hot. Just here. Okay. okay. Did Daddy see? Great. Jack, you've done excellent here with our toast. Did that. I'm just Yeah, but you can't stick your finger in there yet, right? So guys, 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 this is the best part. So you've got your boiled egg, you cut the top off, and all you have to do is just, oh my word, look at that. The perfect egg and soldier. Let me come to the camera so that everybody can see. Oh. You can see the egg yolk came out. I'm taking away some of the light there. There we go. There we go. And all you have to do is stick it in and boom. The perfect egg and soldier. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I know you don't like the egg yolk. But Jackie likes the egg yolk, and you love the omelette, and you love the poached egg. Yeah, because I like so, the white. And you can also eat the little egg white out of the top. How's that? So, dish one done, two more to go, and the clock is ticking, so please keep up. Go, let me help you. Da 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 da. Ah, the perfect little top for my Blakey bug. Okay, and here we go for our second dish. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my my poaching liquid for my poaching my poached egg. Turn up the heat. Egg is right here. Okay, but please don't make a mess. I'm going to just clear out my egg shell. Okay, yeah, Jack, that's enough for now. Boy, you can eat a little bit later. Our friends don't want to see you just having the best boiled egg or poached <laughs> boiled egg and raw. Okay, put your toast over there. Next, next, next. The clock is ticking. So, let me explain to you guys what we are doing here. 
I have got a lemon and you might think why would this guy want to have a lemon when he's doing a poached egg now the reason why we use a lemon the lemon juice is acidic and the reason why we want to use something acidic like a vinegar or lemon juice is that this inside the water will help the white the egg white contract and stick together as soon as that raw egg goes into our boiling water so the number one priority is when we are doing a poached egg is for that egg white to immediately solidify it on the out solidify on the outside so that we don't have to worry about all our egg white going all over our pot and you actually just sit with a boiled egg yolk so that's the last thing we want also a big secret parents the secret to the best 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 poached egg ever is not only the vinegar or the, the acid but the fresher the egg the less of that you would need so if we are if we were fortunate enough to have a chicken that laid us daily eggs that egg white would be firm perfect and that is the, the only and the best way to do your boiled or your poached egg so i've squeezed out just hang on two seconds blakey so i've squeezed out just hang on what? So I've squeezed out the whole lemon juice inside my boiling water and that's step one for our poached egg. What did you want to say guys? What did you say? Um, why don't you please squeeze the lemon like this? That's also the way but you just got to be strong and this is why we've got to eat our eggs so that we can build muscles so that we can squeeze that juice inside our water. And what no, did you want to say? Come closer to me or else you're out of the shop. Squash it. Hmm? Squash it. What did you want to say? Say again? You need more egg for the, I mean more bread for the, for the Yes, please, best kitchen helper, please give us another slice of toast. Blakey, mm -hmm. Dad is going to show our friends at home how to do, or start our poached egg pot. So my water is boiling everyone, so just if you've only joined us now, we have done a boiled egg for 7 minutes. That is the perfect number of time or minutes for me to do eggs and soldiers. And the second part is now we are doing um, a poached egg or the perfect poached egg. What you will need is boiling water with something acidic inside. We use lemon juice but white wine vinegar is also fine. Please don't jump on the chair but I'm worried you're going to fall. My water is boiling and now I'm turning the heat down to zero, well not zero, on the lowest possible uh, setting and I'm going to take my spoon and give the pot one big stir. The reason for that is we don't want the water to boil vigorously and then push and break our egg white apart. What we want to do is just a slight little pop here and there of our boiling water to help aid the egg white from sticking to the bottom. Please in the toaster ninja. Now I've given the pot a quick stir, almost like a little whirlwind. What that means is that little, not whirlwind, like a, a tornado but not too crazy and all the water is now doing is spinning in the middle so if you're now trying to understand what we are trying to do here is we stop the water from boiling and we're creating a little spiral and now if we break our egg in the middle of the spiral that will immediately suck our egg down to the middle of the pot and that will actually aid with our approached egg last little stir break our egg right in the middle and crack. Close to the water. And crack. Whoa. And crack. Thank you, Jack. And the ice is and crack. I'm just, just hang on, my boy. And again. Now, with my spoon, I am just literally helping that ego to do its thing. And I'm going to use one of these eggs too. In this box. Two seconds, Jack. I need to get it close to the water and I don't want your fingers to be that close. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, egg number two, close to the water, in the pot. Perfect, everyone. I'm going to use my little spoon. Can be any size spoon. It doesn't have to be a teaspoon. And all we're trying to do is just stop that egg from going all the way, sinking to the bottom and actually spreading out like a fried egg because we want that to be a nice little sphere of egg white together so here we go
Hey, hey. What? I'm talking to your brother. Because he's not concentrating. Okay, so that process is done. I wish I could just grab the camera and show it to the above the camera on top of the pot. But immediately what we've done, hey, 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 listen to me. So what we've done here is that the egg white has now got its shape, but the egg inside that um, contracted or already cooked outside from the boiling water or the hot water, it's still very raw on the inside, very runny, so it's very unstable. So now all we're doing with our spoon is make sure that our egg stays together. It does not sink all the way to the bottom. And that is it. Perfect. Boykies, we have got to speed up our jets immediately. Blake, you've lost concentration here already. How about you beat those eggs again? Quickly, give it a good mix. Uh, feed off the counter, please. So team, while, we, while our egg is poaching, I'm just going to get a lot bigger spoon so that I can just pick it up and just keep an eye on the bottom of it. So that's quite raw. Both of them are quite, you can see, as you try to lift it up a little bit, even if you use a spatula, you will see that it's hardly sticking together. So I'm just going to turn up the heat. Remember, I do not want to boil my water. I just want that water to stay nice and warm. You can hear my gas cooker doing its bit. Immediately seeing the inside, the water starting to move around as the heat exchange. But on this side, while the poaching process is underway, we're going to quickly do the world's best omelette made by Jack. All right, cool, buggy. Have you whisk, quickly whisk again? I thought you were going to help. Okay, my pan is nice and hot. Okay, so we're going to share the responsibility, Blake. My pan is hot. I'm using about a 26 centimeter small frying pan. The reason why I'm using a smaller pan is, I think for most or obvious reasons, is that if the surface is wider, our egg needs to go a lot, uh, we need to stretch our egg a lot more, meaning we end up with quite a paper thin piece of omelette. Um, whereas a smaller pan like this, in this particular case, is a 26 centimeter pan, it goes from one side of the bottom to the other side, meaning that we've got a nice thick but a decent size uh, omelette that we are going to be making. So we've got added oil to that. My pan is super hot and this is where kids need to be aided by the parents when we are adding our goodies to the pan. Make it go. Nice and slow remember. The pan is hot. Do not touch the pan. Sure dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blake can you get us our dispatcher? Right here. Don't move, don't move. Just stand back. I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. In this case, a spatula and a spoon. Okay, stand up. My poached egg is perfect and it's finished. So, again, now, two things at the same time. So everybody, please concentrate right now. My egg in my pan, and I'll show you another handy trick. But right now we're getting a little bit of color underneath our omelet. Two seconds, Jack. I'm using a tea towel because obviously we are taking the egg out of water and naturally we want to absorb some of that water before you put it on your toast. Yeah, you can get your toast, Jack. Put it in, put it in. Kid, please put, put the toast in. The team, as you can see, my egg is nice and soft on the inside, and here we've got our egg. This is the other one. This egg was clearly not as fresh as the other one, and the fresh egg definitely prevailed in this particular episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're also going to do here, team, is the best way to spread that raw egg around our omelette is to pull the side and let that raw egg run to the bottom of the pan. And that raw egg will start its own cooking little process and this way we don't end up with that <coughs> burn crisp underneath and then still have a ton of raw egg at the top this is the last thing we're doing. my pan is doing its bit my kids are doing their bit 
five minutes to go. Hey, are you going to put the cheese on? I'd like to. No. Don't you want to put the cheese on? Can I? Okay, cool, cool. Stand up or else you're going to fall off the chair. Please, Jack, if you can put up. Just cool. remember, don't touch the pan. Do not touch the pan. A bit more. A bit more. I'm going to help you here, bud. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So we've just done a normal plain <coughs> omelette with cheese, but obviously whatever your liking is. If kids like to add broccoli and fresh rocket and spinach and Jack does not like too many green things sometimes. Well, not all the green things. He does love green things, um, but not all of them. So all we have to do with our spatula, check it out. My omelette is nice and loose in the pan. Nothing is sticking to the bottom. Flip the one side over. Um. And we are almost complete. Just allow that to get a little bit more color. I'm just going to try and flip that a dash bit more. Two seconds. Do you toast will come, dude? As soon as that thing pops, we ready. Pop. Turn up your heat. Take your pan, slide it onto your little plate. And, and boom. Voila. An omelet. <laughs> so this is just in three very easy ways to get your child involved in the kitchen. Please, uh, grown-ups, if you could um, just move your pots and pans to the, to the back of the burner. And also a very handy tip, especially if you've got little ones around. I'll just leave that for me for two seconds. Especially if you've got little toddlers, anything between three and under, to keep the pan handle quite low or two hanging over the side could be dangerous, especially when they're showing quite a lot of interest in the kitchen. Last thing you want to do is somebody being so little and short to grab the pan handle and whatever is in your pot or pan um, can go straight on into their face or onto their body, whatever. So basically my point is when we are trying to fry and cook something on the hob, especially on the back or the, the, the hobs closer to you, um, try and keep that handle either to the side or to the back on an area where you know your child can't grab the handle. If they had to grab the side of the pan, you know, that's a different story, but at least they haven't grabbed something cool and then pull it down with something boiling inside and actually really can get hurt. So basically, basic small kitchen safety skills uh, that can go a long way, especially if you do go to somebody's house and they don't know that handy tip. It's something um, that everybody should know or can share that has got kids or little ones in around the house. So team, that is three very simple egg dishes you can do. Our number one was eggs and soldiers. Remember, for me, we used a large egg or large egg uh, and we boil that for seven minutes. All right, cool. You've got about two and a half minutes, three minutes to, to do your toast with your eggs and soldiers. Use a sharp serrated knife. I use the bread knife to cut the top off. That, 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 that serrated edge really digs in quite easily into the egg shell. And it's quite easy to cut that top off and just put it inside. I use espresso cups in our case, um, but a normal egg cup will obviously do a lot better. Okay, cool. Just put it here. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, our dish number two was the poached egg. Fresher the egg, the better. What we add to our water is something acidic, white wine vinegar or spirit, white spirit vinegar. In our case, we use the lemon and that actually helps the, the egg white contract and, and, and keep together during your cooking process. And that's the most important part of it. Then our last but not least, the scrambled egg, the smaller pan, uh, creates a smaller cooking surface but creates a lot higher uh, omelette for you and then also preheat your pan make sure that pan is nice and hot and during the cooking process remember to pull that cooked egg a little bit back so that the raw egg can go in underneath the egg and on the side so that we don't end up with a very raw top and a cooked through or overcooked bottom so that's a nice way to just start moving your egg around Finish it off with whatever topping you want to, flip it over, slide it onto your pan, and your kids will be happy. Alright guys, what do we say to our friends? Bye! Bye, and we'll see you next week for another fun episode of Kitchen Exploration.